Hey guys, I'm sure you've all been enjoying iOS 11. It's a great update, lots of new features, but there are still more and more being found all the time. So this video, I wanna share another 50, 60 plus new hidden features in iOS 11. A lot of these are some little subtle ones. Some of them are very complex, uh, stuff that you wouldn't really expect Apple to add even, but let's go ahead and get into this and show you everything new discovered in iOS 11, a lot of the hidden features. The unlock animation will Starting up your phone display, it's actually adaptive to the type of wallpaper you have. So watch this, when you turn it on, notice how it fades in and there's this subtle blur effect that kind of unblurs as it's going on. And it always starts from the brighter wallpapers. So here's this one and here's this wallpaper. So the old iOS 9 one, notice how the blur or the fade in starts from up around here and goes down. So really cool adaptive uh, turning your display on feature. Apple also updated the time it takes to completely turn your display off. So one, two, three. Notice how on the left, iOS 11 turns off faster. One, two, three. So the display is just half a second faster to turn off completely. You can now use reachability to go ahead and enter the wiggly jiggly mode for your app icons and move them around in reachability, which you previously couldn't. And a reachability feature that I don't like is that you can no longer enable it on the notifications page. So if you have a notification way up there with a big phone and small hands and you wanna bring it down, you can no longer do that on this iOS 11 beta, so a minus feature. I've always found it funny that in the settings when you 3D touch the app icon, the little logo for the battery is on low or empty as if to suggest something that the iPhone doesn't get good battery life. Now in iOS 11, they updated the icon and it's slowly gaining charge here. I'm sure by the time iOS 11 releases, it'll be in full position. Very subtle one, but it is there. So in the spotlight interface, you'll notice it's been tweaked. The magnifying glass icon's a little bit smaller. The overall search bar's a little bit smaller and the dictation icon is a little smaller here. Now I'm sure all of you guys will appreciate this, especially those with smaller storage sizes, but iOS 11 as a whole takes up less storage to run on your device. You'll notice I have about 0.4 gigabytes available on iOS 11 where I don't on iOS 10. So overall you get more capacity back with iOS 11. iOS 11 improved security by doing this one thing. So some apps before only give you the option to allow location access always or never. Now it forces them to have an option for while using the app, which is awesome. There's also a new feature called persistent location data. So if you leave an application that was tracking your location, it will leave a bar on top of your display to let you know that the location is still being tracked. Not this one, this is for screen recording, but just to give you reference. A blessing for those with nosy people in their lives, location services no longer lets you see frequent locations without a touch ID passcode. Now it will ask you to verify before seeing that. You can further improve battery life on iOS 11 by limiting background app refresh to just Wi-Fi. You now have control over which method it uses to refresh. One I missed in the last video, the new number pad keyboard, this is what it looks like. It's a little bit more schemorphic than before, kind of like this one a little bit better, but there it is. In many areas of iOS, you'll notice that the icons are gonna be a lot bolder. So this is the phone application in particular. And as you can see, they make a little bit more sense, a little bit more distinct. And a really great update to the dialer you'll find throughout iOS is that whenever you type in any numbers in it now, the backspace key is down here for easy access instead of having to reach all the way up here. Now this secret menu here within the phone dialer no longer allows you to get to the decibel meter for your LTE signal. A lot of people notice that right away. So Apple patched the little glitch you would use to get it to stay permanently in your status bar. For the people that don't know what this is, doesn't really matter for you. Check this out. This is one of the cooler things I'll be showing you in this video. So drag and drop the feature exclusive to iPads is actually built in to iOS 11 on the iPhone in limited areas. So someone was actually able to take a file from the messages application and drag it over to the notepad using the app switcher. For some reason, me, that doesn't really work for me. I can't do it. It kind of freezes, but I can drag and drop within the messages application. And this isn't a feature Apple advertised on the iPhone. So I can take that and go into here, drop it over here and then send it to this person. Well, if it decides to work on me, it should be sitting in there, there it is. 3D touching on links within the messages application now gives you the share button where before it wouldn't on iOS 10. Assistive touch got several new features. So if we actually jump into our device, go to more, you'll find several new options here. First off is SOS, which enables the emergency feature. There's also the option to restart 
And there is another one over here for home kits. If you have that enabled on your device, I currently do not. So you're able to quickly restart with just the click of a button. A lot of minor changes in the camera application. So jumping in, if you are taking an HDR photo and when we take it, look at the loading rings over here. It's kind of the respring logo old one over here on the left with iOS 11. It's a clean little new wipe. So that's interesting. There's also an interface updates to up here, live and HDR uh, sit next to each other, not on top of each other, just like that. There's also a new interface for the filters. So if you jump into here, instead of going into that grid view, they're now in the little slider view over here, which is I think much nicer. There is also a new filter included over here. So just like in the editing mode on the photos application, Apple included here to make 10 instead of nine before. And another very tiny interface change in the camera is that the reverse camera icon over here is a little less prominent, not as bold. And taking a bunch of images now, look at the way that the icons change. So over here, it completely becomes grayed in. On the left, just uh, gets a little border around it. And if you own the 7 Plus and you 3D touch on the camera app icon now, you'll get a new option to take portrait. So that's a little change for the 7 Pluses. And a very cool feature hidden into the camera app is with the new QR scan function, you're actually able to scan the back of a router and quickly get the passcode and connect to the network just by doing that. Super handy. It's It was included in some Android phones earlier, so it's nice that Apple added it. Also, here is another option. So inside of the camera settings, which are split up now, there is an option to disable the QR code function in case that's annoying to you and you don't want it. And there are new permission settings for third-party applications asking to access your photos. You can choose uh, never add photos only or read and write full access. It was always super annoying in earlier versions of iOS that when you would go to hide a photo uh, because you didn't want anyone to stumble over it, and you hit it, it would still show up in all photos. Now it no longer does that. In fact, it gets its own little uh, area over here for hidden photos where you can go ahead and see all of the ones you hid. The memories function is kind of cool. I don't really use it, but now in iOS 11, you'll get new notifications when a memory has been compiled. So once you've got enough photos from a certain location or of a certain subject, it will go ahead and give you a notification letting you know that that is available and you can go ahead and view it. Now when editing live photos, you now have an option, very handy one, to go Go ahead and mute the audio without necessarily killing the live photo function. Really cool feature that Apple included system wide in iOS 11 is drag to close videos. So whether you're in Safari or any other application, you can quickly drag down just like you would in the photos application to exit. And not only can you do that, Apple went further and allowed you to do zoom in any video anywhere. So you can go ahead and zoom during any portion of a video, which is super handy. I'm sure you guys remember this. When you have Bluetooth headphones connected, you'll see a little battery meter right next to them. Now in iOS 11, that's no longer there. That's completely missing next to the icon. A very minor detail that's now updated in iOS 11. If your device is in low power mode, as you can see, both of them are, and you go to the widgets page, you will now see that that's reflected there in the batteries widgets where before it wasn't. When you go to reset your device and reset all content and settings or really anything, it'll ask you now if you want to finish the backup and upload to iCloud before doing that. Previously, it would just say, hey, go right in, delete all your data and erase everything that's uploading right now. I'm sure because Apple rewrote the app store completely, this no longer works. But if you go ahead and tap 10 times on a category in the app store, it no longer will reset the app store and fix any temporary issue you were having. Now just nothing happens. Originally introduced in iOS 10.3, Apple later removed this feature for whatever reason, but in-app ratings and reviews, that option is now back in iOS 11, where previously it isn't anywhere to be seen in 10.3.2. Another great update to the rating system in iOS 11 is that Apple requires that in-app ratings are a thing for every application. So you'll be able to quickly rate within the app using a system prompt instead of having to go into the app store every single time. And an interesting update to the user interface in the app store. So when you guys actually go to use the new Apple Pay interface, it will make the Apple Pay sound as well as give haptic feedback on iOS 11. And when you go to mark up a photo over here, you'll notice that the icon has been updated as well. The control center can now be swiped through depending on how many app icons you have, you know, going to landscape from the lock screen, bring up control center, you can easily navigate using this method. Check this out, guys. The new screen record feature built into iOS will not let you record Netflix. So actually, this is what happens, what you see when you're attempting to record Netflix, Hulu, or any third-party video application. So I exited it, went back in, 
and it just glitches out. It will not let you record. And something interesting I found out about the screen record feature. So you can enable it and disable it just like that. Super simple. But while you have it enabled, you can 3D touch on it and actually disable microphone audio as well. And one of those little tiny subtle details, the Wi-Fi animation when it's connecting to a network. Did you see that? It looks really, really interesting from the control center. And the timer can now be 3D touched and easily accessed with a slide maneuver, much like the flashlight toggle up to two hours and you can go ahead and start it. And then when you 3D touch on it, you can see how much time you have left without needing to go into the application itself. Now in the camera settings, you'll find a new area for formats. This is actually for the new uh, HIEC and HEVC formats for video. You'll find the settings here. Now if you actually use the high efficiency format and transfer the photo to your computer, it'll show up in a .HIEVC format instead of JPEG. This might be an issue, something Apple hasn't figured out yet, but just thought I'd point that out. Also, if I go into the very same settings on an iPhone, 6s you'll notice it does not have that feature over here for the compression meaning that it is a 7 and 7 plus feature only safari now has tab search which is a very useful feature if you have a ton go to the top and then drag down to reveal it there is now a persistent reader view inside of safari so hold on the reader button you'll get this option to use reader just on this website or use on all websites this one's actually kind of funny apple throwing shade at google's privacy policy so this is found by a user on reddit but if you go to google's privacy policy page and go to the search bar the first suggestion is criticisms of google interesting when you visit a website that's deemed unsafe by safari you're going to get this new interface for it it's not a new feature just a new look and you can now export full safari pages into a pdf that you can immediately mark up using this share option markup as pdf there's a revamped interface for transactions inside of apple pay so when you click on more details this is what it's going to look like. Now, this is the keychain logo for iOS 11, slightly updated, and it's going to show in applications that even don't support the keychain function. So Apple's adding it to every area, anywhere, really. And noticed by many, Apple has actually improved the scroll behavior inside of the music application, whereas before it would stutter, be glitchy with a large amount of songs, playlists. It's now very, very smooth in iOS 11. And on the very top, you'll notice that the buttons for the play and shuffle are more prominent, easier to see and press. iOS 11 will now let you repeat a timer with this button here after it's done. There's a new setting for Siri that will allow you to control when she speaks up. If you have your phone on silent, you can choose a control with ring switch so she will not make any noise or only have her talk back to you when you talk to her through the Hey Siri command or of course the usual always on function. For those that like to live life dangerously in the call audio routing, there's a new option to auto answer calls. So this will actually allow you to set a certain timer so it will auto answer after a certain amount of time. In the app switcher, there's a new interface for handoff. It's slightly cleaner and instead of dragging up now, you just tap on it once to activate. And a welcome interface change in the notes application, if you slide on an individual note, you'll now get two new options. One is to easily lock the note instead of having to go into the more info settings of every single note. And the second is to create a new folder using that note very easily. Also discover that from the lock screen, if you press five times easily for the SOS function and you have a medical ID set up, you'll get a medical ID slider in here as well. Very interesting. Now, if you do enable SOS, this is what happens now from the lock screen. So just click it five times and it will start the emergency countdown and you can go ahead and ask it to stop calling. In mail, you'll find a much cleaner view for conversations with a lot of replies. As you can see, it's very compact here and you can quickly expand them by clicking on one. In FaceTime, you do now have the option to quickly disable the live photos function. And now there's some interface changes to FaceTime as well. So the mute icon, it changes over here. You actually have to select mute in this pop-up menu and to reverse the camera instead of this button right here, you just click on the prompt right there and it will reverse the camera for you. And small change to the health application, as you can see the theme overall has changed a little bit, but the default tab is now the today tab where before it doesn't exist, it's the health data tab. And lastly, the iPad stuff. I actually learned this one today. I was kind of surprised that I didn't know about it, but to enter the control center, just swipe up from the bottom of the page like that, super clean. You don't have to go and click the home button every single time. And the iPad gets sort of 3D touch-like functionality in iOS 11. So go into the control center and now just hold on icons in the control center to get the very same menus as on a 3D touch device, which is super cool. Previously, you couldn't do this and you even get the same platters, the same overall design 
as before, which is actually awesome. You get handoff now in the dock. So whatever your iPhone is doing or any other device, as you can see, it will adapt and bring that app up over here on the right in the dock, which is really handy. And of course, the feature where you can bring up recent apps just by holding on an application and you'll get that interface right there with the recent apps you may have used or opened on the device. And the amount of things you can do now at the same time on the iPad is just incredible. This is just four, but I've seen people go up to as much as eight or nine at the same time. You can now control video playback with an external keyboard. You can play pause, raise the volume, or skip ahead or behind. All right, guys, there it is, over 75 more features in iOS 11. I'm sure there'll be more. It just amazes me how much Apple added to this firmware. Stay tuned, peace.